The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 171, Nasdaq's up 58, S&P's up 18 and a half, Gold down ten dollars, trading at fourteen ninety five an ounce. You get silver down eight cents, seventeen dollars eighty five cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up eight cents, fifty six dollars seventy four cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the ten year down thirteen ticks, one twenty nine oh three. Thirty year off a full point at one fifty eight twelve. And king dollar, king dollar down sixty ticks, trading ninety seven seven seventy three. The euro is at one ten. The yen is at one oh eight point nine two, and the pound is at one twenty eight to one U S dollar. We have um, the Fed on Wednesday. If we go over to the bond market right now, you know, it, it, it's pretty wild that we're at all-time highs. The Fed is expected to do another quarter point. And then the market's going to be saying, well, number one, why? And number two, what are you going to do for me next? When you say they're going to do a quarter point, they're going to cut a quarter point. Yes. If you weren't paying attention, yeah. you'd think they were going to hike your all-time highs, it's, right? They're going to do it all right. This, gonna... is, this is going to be so intriguing, folks, okay? Yeah. That, you know, we're at 1.75 to 2. Yes. So that would bring it down to 1.5 to 1.75. You got it. 90%, right? Almost 91% yeah. in there priced in. Yeah. S&Ps are at highs. And then it's like, okay, so what's in front of us? Yes. You know, what that. is the forecast, right? What is the fear that's causing that, for right. sure? Right. Now, tying it in, though, we get non-farm payrolls on Friday. Yeah. I believe the estimate's about 84000 So that's what's being priced in, that's man. A low that number. is not a number that we're right. used to. We're used to, what, 175 150 right. 130 right. 220 you know? Yeah. Not 80 Is that the new norm? That's 80, be 50 No, I know. 40 I, 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 Are we going to have months that we don't add? 80000 for a whole month? Yeah. So that that for sure. So gold, gold on Friday gets to a higher high, has volume behind the move, and then just gives it up. Uh, Quite an acceleration early today. Yep, yeah, there's no doubt. So we t we take a look at this. What you're going to see, we've done 192,000 contracts. Friday you break top side, you do 363. Now it's going to be intriguing here. Is that you know it's down good, but the bottom line is that your your lowest swing point is laying out here at uh, twenty dollars lower. Yeah, fourteen seventy eight. Yeah, so. We'll see what they can basically do inside this gold market. What I do expect we're going to see, uh, you can see on the uh, intraday chart, man, that was, that was a big sell right there. Look at that thing. And that's a high volume low, so it'll probably get tested. One to the left there. Yeah. There you go. 940, okay. Right. Yeah. So the, um, the dollar, get over to the dollar. It's not like the dollar's moving higher. You know, it's been going sideways. Five days of, you know, we, got, we went up last week, but you get a sideways move. And... I guess it's it's heads up as to what's going to be said uh, in that statement. Yeah. Um, the S and P, I believe the S and P as well as the uh, NDX 100 and the Nasdaq just got to new highs. We get the spy 30366. I believe that's the new all time high. I believe you're correct. Yeah. 30223 was before that. Okay. And then the NDX 100. Yeah, I mean, you got Microsoft popping 3% today on $10 yeah. billion dollar, uh, cloud deal with uh, the Pentagon. Right. Amazon going to be trying to fight that in court, but good luck to them. How are they? Are they bringing it to court? I believe so. Okay. And that has to do with just uh, their assertion that President Trump just railroaded them for right. no reason. Which, which he did. Which he did, <laughs> if you read the news. So we'll see if they... The, uh, the, uh, the thing that is amazing, man, I mean, this thing goes back a few years now. Amazon, because... Oracle had brought it to court because they felt that Microsoft and Amazon had a lead on it. Yes. So that took a year, year and a half. And then, you know, Amazon was the lead dog. And, you know, of course, the bottom line is that, uh, guess what? <laughs> oh, this is where you see that the, you're talking about monster money, which is 10 billion. In, in the Secretary of Defense, he opted himself out. Mattis, you're talking about? No, uh, Esther. Okay. Okay. Um, There's been a lot of talk because cause the, I read the article over the, the weekend sun, that said the that... The Sun works for one of them. The Sun, okay. His Sun, right. his sun works for Microsoft or Amazon. Microsoft okay, okay. Sun, you know. Sure. 
So, bottom so he line, recused himself, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. So bottom line, they, they said he saw it coming or whatever. Um, Silver, you know, what's interesting here, folks, is this. Silver last week, the silver equities were much stronger than the gold equities. So it's going to be intriguing watching how this shakes out this week. You know, I like the idea that that has happened because, you know, silver is highly volatile. Uh, when the equities actually start moving, it means something, meaning the silver equities. You can see silver gave it up also on Friday. Gets up to 1835, closes at 1780. Uh, has good volume, 134,000. So you're backing down today, but it's not, not the end of the world. It's only eight cents. Yeah. Uh, Tiffany's, right? Tiffany's. Uh, not a bad day to be a Tiffany shareholder. Yeah. This is up, what, 23% or something? You got uh, yeah. 30 bucks right now. And so you got Louis Vuitton, right, coming in yeah. and saying that they want to buy it for $14.5 That right. That pegs it at 120 the interesting thing about this is that the market says, wait a second, all right, they want to buy it at 120. They're probably going to sell it, but they ain't going to sell it at 120. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And, you know, the thing that's amazing is that, uh, yeah, LVHM, that, that French company, they, that guy is something else. He's man. one of the richest men in the world. Right. LVMH, too, it is. Yeah. LVMH. And he's, I mean, every high end brand you know now is him. Yeah. You know? We'll, we'll pull up the, the description because um, I don't think. Most people are aware of how many brands that that yeah. uh, company. Yeah, LVHM. No, LVMH. Well, LVMH. Louis Vuitton, Moet, Hennessy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so guess what? Moet's in there. Hennessy's in there. Yeah. Um, but when we pull up the description, man, it's a big one. So here we go. Christian Dior, Don Perignon, Moet and Chandon, Vouv Clique. Yeah. Uh, where are we going? Um, Tag here, Bulgari, Marc Jacobs. Um, oh my God. Let's see. They keep going, man. They keep Sophia going. Sophia Cosmetics lines. Exactly. Christian Dior, um, Bernard Arnault um, is the man. richest man in France, and he's right up there on the world rankings. Yeah, he is. That's quite, that's quite a... Yeah. Yep. So they're going after Tiffany's, man, and um, market saying they're probably going to go after them even harder than they already yeah. did. Yeah. With that unsolicited bid for fourteen point five. Pay up a little bit more. That's right. Some of the higher volume. Oh boy, really? PG oh, and E. Let's, huh? let's look at this. I haven't heard this one. This is so heavy, folks. PG. PG. PCG, I believe it is. PC. PCG. There we go. Yeah, this is out of business. It's just Period. remarkable that it uh, that it's continuing to not be priced in you know like why I, is something I, not priced in today that was not priced in on on friday or monday i mean right. remarkable that we were right. just sitting at seven eight dollars yeah um and, and talking the, about the planned right. blackout spires and you had the high volume low at five something we're far below that at now 507 yeah. that's done and you know the, the thing that's crazy like if you this morning folks there's there's a, there's a couple more fires that are happening right now and one of okay. them happens to be right near the getty museum and if you haven't been to la the Getty Museum is kind of in L.A., right, right outside. It. The, the correlation well, I'd give someone if you're in Boston is like it's at Route 128. Okay. It's right next to the expressway. Okay. That's, where, that's where these people are leaving. I mean, you're talking about major, you know, not downtown where the high rises are, but you're talking about the belts that are going right along L.A. Man. You're talking about serious business, man. All right, we'll pull it up after the break. I'm just interested in myself. That Stay is right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 179. Nasdaq's up 67. S&Ps are up 19 and a half. And we were looking at that uh, PG&E. Um, <laughs> Pretty remarkable, man. We were just going through the story over the break. So they do have at least one additional fire in there. They're calling it the tick fire and so forth. So I'm just going to slide down here. I mean, this is just remarkable. You're looking at the mandatory evacuation area here. You're looking at the evacuation warning area here. You're right by the Pacific. Brentwood Park. Um, where were we just, uh, Mulholland Drive, right? I mean, just right. very, very known areas, not in the middle of nowhere. This is affecting 50, 38 of the 58 counties. The uh, amazing thing is that these gusts of winds, man, I mean, this is like they get a mini hurricane, but it's a gust of wind. It says 90 to 100 miles an hour. Yeah, that's remarkable, man. So, and with, of course, what that does, folks, it, it takes a timber from one place, and, man, that timber can, you know, go a mile away. Yeah, in no time, right? And that's how you have these spread just... In no, in no time, right. I mean, literally. Right. Right. So near Los Angeles, brush fire that's burned them 400 acres, forcing evacuations, Mulholland Drive, south of the Pacific Ocean. Nearby Getty Art Museum has thus far been spared. A second blaze called the Tick Fire forced tens of thousands to flee. North of San Francisco, the Kincaid Fire, that's the one we're talking about on yeah. Friday of last week, continues to rage in Sonoma County. That has burned 54,300 acres, forcing almost 200,000 people to evacuate. You got down here... A LeBron James tweet, L.A. fire's no joke, had to emergency evacuate the house, driving around, can't find a room. Like you said at the break, if he can't find a room, who's going to be able to find a room, right? Totally. Um, practically a billionaire um, right. if he can't find a room, let alone the average person. So there it is, 38 of California's 58 counties affected. Um, so it's not something you just move out of like a very rural wooded area. It's yeah. the entire region, which is the scary thing. So the largest number of shutoffs in Sonoma County, where the Kincaid fire triggered a massive exodus Saturday and Sunday, state of emergency declared by the governor, power was out in Oakland and almost all Berkeley. of affluent Mar Marin County, exactly. While the city of San Francisco itself was spared, many surrounding towns were hit. You got Marin County everywhere. And um, what you had mentioned down here, which is uh, just to tie yeah. it back to the economic part of things, shareholder part of things, which is a minimal part of things when you just factor in the human life aspect of things but the prospect of more liabilities and this is maybe what's hitting the stock from wildfires 
expires is especially vexing for PG&E. Since filing for Chapter 11 in January, the judge overseeing the case has warned that another big blaze would upend the utilities bankruptcy and potentially wipe out shareholders. That's the judge, all right? Yeah. That's not, you better be listening because he's as unbiased as it probably should get. All right. Any claims from new fires sparked by PG&E would have to be paid out first Oof. and in full before those from previous blazes get a dime. That's pretty wild. Man, that is that pretty works. wild, yeah. So, so last comes first in this case. And it, it, not that it should, it's it's tough either way, right? Yeah. But it should in light of like, that risk is already factored in, right? If you're buying the shares right now and you're factoring in, you can't just eliminate anything that happens in the future, man. You know, right. because then yeah, there's just it. no yeah. no accountability yeah. if that's the way it rolls. I think the only way to make them accountable is that you're accountable in the future first, because otherwise, there's no incentive to repair all their, you know, infrastructure that right. they already know is a mess. So they, you almost got to, I, I see. Man, but that is intense. I don't know how that gets turned around, but hopefully for the people out there, that's pretty intense. 38 of 58 counties in a state the size of California. Which is the, I think California is the fifth largest yeah. economy in the world. If yeah. it was its, own. it's either right. fifth or seventh or yeah. seventh. It's, it's, it's up there. It's, it it's is. A, it's a big if number. it was its own country, it would be uh, yeah. basically a, a juggernaut on its own. Yeah. So we have um, some of the higher volume equities out here. You got Roku up nine dollars. You got uh, that's trading at one forty two. Tesla's up five bucks, three thirty three. Um, Look at Virgin Galactic. That's moving. I haven't seen something like that for a while. You haven't because that's the first day it's traded, man. Oh, is it? Oh, it's the cool. first day that we got space travel <laughs> trading like on, uh, on a public, and I referenced it during the 9 o'clock update. Cool. Um, the future is here, man. Yeah. I mean, that's the first time that we have a publicly traded stock for space tourism. Look at that. And you imagine that, you know, the Jetsons is coming our way, man, and that it's only a matter of time else. between before and i say a matter of time the time is now um you got public companies so they went public at ten dollars okay trading 1273 right now they hit 1289 they're uh this is pretty cool let's see so now i wonder how this goes though because where oh, was it trading look what this says it operates a blank check company the company engages in mergers share exchange asset acquisition share purchase reorganization asset management and other financial services so I wonder how, can you go back to the description the yeah. main, or the issue, because issue. it says it was issued in 2017, but maybe this is the first time it jumped to the NYSE? Maybe. And that's the headline? Yeah, um, maybe that's it. Because this, see, a, this is pretty wild, folks. When, when the market gets really bullish, which it has been bullish, that's when people can operate a blank check company. So a blank check company is amazing. That they actually got people to put money into it, saying I can do anything I want to do. They're in space travel. Mm -hmm. They're going to be one uh, quite an anomaly, I think. You know. That's, yeah. That's what they're saying. They can do anything they want to do. I mean, that's 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 what a blank check company yeah. is. You know, they they named yeah. it Virgin Galactic. And yeah. Now they're only they're only I say only, but you know they're only a billion dollar company. So this isn't like the Uber where you're pricing it at like eighty billion dollars and right. they're just burning through money, right? right? They're only a right. billion dollar company. So um, now is Virgin Galactic? Is this supposed to be Branson's? Kill? I believe so. Well, let's find them then. <laughs> you know, this is where this can get really pretty wild, man. Uh, that well, we don't see it, but I, I suspect that's probably going to get updated. Is that, that is. Oh, yeah, Virgin Galactic. Branson's, yeah. Branson's deal. You right? got it, man. Yeah. You know. Pretty cool. How about AT&T? Because they're number two on the list. We kind of jumped past them. They came out, uh, three-year restructuring plan. They're going to be selling off some assets to make Elliott Management a little happy. Um, CEO staying on there through 2020 at least. They're okay. adding two board seats as well. Man, their debt load, though, I think I read $145 billion of debt. Really? So... Yeah, so um, so that's a staggering number, man, and I imagine that that is when Elliot came in and said, "Sell off some of your non-core assets," and I believe they're going to be paying off the debt from the Time Warner. Um, let me, can I just jump? I think I might already have it back in CNBC uh, when I was jumping around here, because it is some staggering numbers when you get into it. So they're going to be two two new board members selling off up to ten billion dollars worth of non-core business next year. And when you really get into it, so Elliott has a $3.2 billion stake. The CEO, Randall Stevenson, remains CEO through 2020. And I believe the debt numbers are down here, man, because they are staggering. There we go. Reduce its debt pile of $153.5 billion. They are in there. And uh, I believe they want them to completely 
eliminate the debt that they had from their Time Warner acquisition, okay. which is still on the books. Was that Time Warner and AOL? A on AT&T Time Warner, okay. uh, I okay. believe, yeah. And then you had, uh, what, was, uh, what was interesting is that the Joker, um, the bottom line, that's a big hit for Time Warner. Yeah, highest grossing R-rated movie ever. I right. saw it myself. It was yeah. pretty good. Check and it out if you're interested. What had happened, though, is that Time Warner didn't think it was going to be. Yeah. And they sold 50% of it prior Shame to Shame on it. them. And yeah. the director and, uh, is it Joaquin? Yeah, Joaquin Phoenix, okay. the actor. They, they both buy got monster good for them. bonuses because they didn't think it was going to be a hit. This Isn't happens a lot. I mean, the biggest movies out there are not R-rated. You don't realize it most of the time. There's a lot of great R-rated movies. But when you talk, talk about billion, 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 yeah. it's mostly families. It's mostly that type of uh, okay. movie that can really deliver. Yeah. But... Stay right there, folks. Time and I come right back. Dow up 186. NASDAQ up 72. S&P's up 20. Come right back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And uh, over the weekend, Bitcoin had quite a move. Like a three thousand dollar move, a uh, twenty eight hundred dollar move. In it three sure days. did, man. Look at that run up. So when is that? That is Friday evening, I believe. Nine o'clock at night. Yeah, October twenty fifth. Is that Thursday night? I'm not sure how these price, but you see the price tag, right? So we go from seventy five hundred up to ten thousand three hundred. We've settled back at about ninety three hundred, and still that's from you know. And what we're getting here is you you avoid the weekend 
Right. Um, there's no weekend action. This is more the right. future or, you know, XBT. And you still almost made it on this one up to 98.63, the high 99.33. Look at this thing. You want a little volatility? Look at that. And I believe there was, this is China. President Xi okay. had some positive remarks. And the world said, whoa. There you go. China endorses blockchain. Okay. That's, that's a, a welcome remark, I'm sure. Yeah. So after China's government threw its backing behind the digital coin's underlying ledger technology. So the most traded crypto briefly exceeded 10,000 over the weekend, a level it hadn't touched in more than a month, surged Monday to 99.34, trimmed those gains a bit. And uh, I yeah. guess the whole crypto index would be up yet advanced. So let's see if they get into the latest leg of rally cropped up after China's President Xi said Beijing will increase investment in blockchain technology. An, invest, an official with China's central bank also said blockchain technology can help with commercial banks' risk control and ease borrowing difficulties for smaller business. Yeah. Well, China must have figured out a way to lock that down then for them to say that. <laughs> yes. Because no, they must be terrified, actually, of an unregulated currency market the way they like to clamp down right. anything and, on their people. It's going to be their currency market. That's, that's, that's why they like this. Do you know what I mean? They'll use this as the central bank and then they'll know everything because they almost know everything about anyone right now sure you know but going forward that this is right up their alley you know what i mean because it's like okay you know when you when you're in china i forgot whether it's a five dollar bill or a twenty dollar bill there's nothing higher than that like, yeah you know it'd be um, interesting though one of the things people love about cryptos though is the anonymity and you know and that stuff so yeah, they won't have that choice there, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's pretty wild. The, um, well, we'll see where this dollar wants to go. I mean, the, the whole, hey, I know what to do. I want to go to this bond. Because, so the bonds, folks, okay, you know, this is going to be like the market, I suspect, kind of said to me, okay, what are you going to do for me now? Now, we're coming into the September 13th last swing low. And let me just look at it now. But this morning, we were coming into a much lighter volume. 460. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, this ain't going to do 460. We're at, we're at the 30 year right now is at 128,000. We're coming into 460. Now, it's not holding price. So that's saying that, yeah, you can get on a 157.17. And I just yeah. point out that we got Fed coming two days from right now, man. We're sitting right. right at that level. You could usually get some action with some volume. Oh, we will. Come Wednesday. We will. When you get yeah. Yeah. a cut expected, and then you hear from the chairman in terms of what's coming down the future. Exactly. Why are we getting a cut? What are they worried about? Right. How worried are they? Right. <clears throat> and then we get jobs on Friday, which is pretty cool, right on the heels of it. Yeah. So let's look at the next cut. That's, oh, look at how fast. That's way down. Okay. Yeah. We got, uh, yeah. I think it was a little bit higher for December, but we're still, this is held, held pretty steady for two cuts, about 35 to 40% somewhere in next year. But that has come down because we had two to three cuts priced in there pretty certainly. And now it looks like we're getting a cut, and then they might pause for a bit. But that could change quickly, depending on what the chairman has to say yeah. on Wednesday. And what's the market going to say when they pause? We get over to the yen. Now, for all you folks that are in the metals market, this is we're still right in a very dangerous place with this yen. You know, the, the yen. So the number to keep your eye on is this 109.32, which that's with the, that was the downdraft in August. And you can see it's hanging at these highs, man. I don't, I don't want to see it break that, that 109.32 yeah. because that would be saying that gold can take a big hit, man. So, Yeah, know. so a higher price level in this is pointing to a weaker yen. Yes. That is pointing to a stronger dollar, a stronger dollar not good for gold when right. priced in dollars. Totally. To, to put that whole formation in. And if we go to the euro... We got no. Brexit extension until January. Yeah. So the euro's sideways today, 110. The pound. We're going to get a new election over there. They're trying. Do you hear the new thing? So no. Boris wants a new election. They okay. need two-thirds majority, right, right, to do that. But I heard one analyst talking about today that they may try and change the rules to make it a simple majority to hold a new election somehow. I don't understand they're, they're British politics well all, enough. Oh, they're changing the rules all over the world right Man. now. That's, that's the bottom line. So that pound... You know, we're at 128. The pound does look like it wants to go to 133. You okay. Know, so we'll we'll see how that baby shakes out. But that that's a good move. How about Walgreens? Nice. WBA Walgreens Boots. They came out with their earnings today as well, I believe. Getting a little price action to the upside. Yeah. 
They are uh, quite a quite a trading range right there, right? Down to 54.93. That's just as the market opened, but up to 56 and just hanging at that level, yeah. Yeah, so we've let's see, what is this? That's 97 and oh, that's a long time ago. That's it sure is. four years ago. Yeah. Can we go into the news yes. for them? Yeah, I just want to see what they came out with exactly. Oh, maybe just the top one had it. Okay. Go for it. Okay. So there it is. Earnings per share, buck forty-three. The estimate was a buck forty-one. Year on year, it was one forty-eight. So they beat slightly in the estimate. The yeah. range, though, it's a big range, one thirty-five to one forty-five. They come in at one forty-three. Retail pharmacy comp sales, huge, man. Still a big number. 3.4% yeah. on comp sales for, right. for pharmacy. Net sales, not bad, almost $34 billion. The estimate, pretty close, 33.88. Wow. Yeah. Gross margins, 21.5%. Estimate was 21.5%. And adjusted operating margin, though, decreasing. They don't give you the estimate, but... Uh, and that's where the stock somewhat unchanged as it's kind of digesting that. Just mammoth numbers, though, for Walgreens. Big numbers. Yeah. There's uh, drug stores. Drug yeah. stores aren't going away. No. You know? No, and no. Then, we live in Florida, man. We got, we got, we see them on two on every quarter, man. Yeah. On, on every corner. Right. And I believe there's one of the zip codes down in Lago is one of the largest Walgreens in the whole country. Okay. <laughs> and it has to do with. You know, you're, you're next to a hospital. Yeah. Uh, retirement the, community, it's retirement I'm sure. retirement community. It's the demographic yeah. That, yeah. that's there. There's no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. The um, XAU, the HUI, well, actually, let's look at the GDX. So we'll see what kind of pullback we're getting. Because the volume characteristic is inside this GDX. Oh, it's light volume. It's good. So, you know, we, we went higher on Friday, uh, 59 million. Uh, 59 million is going into 75. That's still not enough, but it was a good number. But today is anemic on the way back. 9.9 .9 million. You've rejected 2708 at this point. Yeah. So it, it's intriguing. So the, the the equities are still trading somewhat stronger than the actual metal. You know. I think what ends up happening also is that, you know, when you get to this higher price here, ten or eleven dollars is not a lot of money. I mean, what fourteen dollars is one percent, right? So Right, fifteen dollars is one percent. You know, we're taking a look at the gold contract. Like yes. When you look at ten seventies, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot sure, of money. Sure. Wow. Sure. Yeah. Dow, Dow up one seventy three. Nasdaq up sixty nine. S and P's up nineteen. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so we're going to have uh, Amazon, Microsoft, and the uh, Defense Department kind of uh, shaking it out here. It'd be interesting to see how it all plays out. But on today, man, Microsoft, the big winner for oh, sure, yeah. as they jump to an all-time high on Monday. Okay. Let's you wanna... see this baby. Right. So and this is a break topside uh, after consolidation. It's got to be a break topside when it's at an all-time high, man. So let's take a look. Put that on a weekly. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, if we get on a weekly, folks, this is... Now, watch this. We were pushing the swing high last week with volume. 143 million. That one's 135 million. Yeah. That one's 143. Yeah. Now, you break it with volume, this is going to be an ABC up, man. And this, yeah. this is, like, wild. And you're looking at a weekly chart here. Yeah. It's an hour into the trading week, and you already have 16 million shares traded. Right. So... Pretty intense. It is. Let's put this on a monthly just for a second. One way move, man. Look at this. Oh, look at the, on the monthly. You're you're 480 million, 477. You're already there. And we have we have almost all week left. I believe we yeah. uh Thursday the 31st Halloween. So we got four full trading days almost left. It's a big number. It sure so is. Amazon is. Did they file a suit yet? So, I don't think they filed the suit yet, okay. but they're coming after it. And one of the tidbits that I'm sure they'll be referencing, um, just an interesting, so this is talking about Mattis, was told to, quote, unquote, screw Amazon out of the contract by the one and only President Trump. And, um, you know, his reaction is pretty interesting in terms of uh, relaying the story to a small group. You had Mattis saying, we're not going to do that. This will be done by the book, both legally and ethically, probably implying that what the president was asking is not legal or ethical. Uh, so Amazon, <laughs> who knows if they have some footing? I said to you the break, man, this is why the president's important. He's the commander in chief. I wonder what they're going to, the courts are going to do when it comes time to say whether the president has the right to choose somebody like right. that. Um, right. But, you know, you have the secretary of defense, well-respected as they come, Mattis, um, kind of pushing back on what the president wanted to do. So I am sure Amazon has an argument. This is gonna Whether continue. that argument will succeed will be something that plays out for a year. Okay, okay oh, yeah. I was going to go through that article. We'll get to that article That's at some idea. point. Um, because it, one more time, because it, oh, because it references here that the big part, like you said, $10 billion, not a mammoth number, right? You have Microsoft worth more than a trillion dollars, sure. okay? But the big question here is that they're, Second to Amazon already. And where is it? That's the add-ons. It is, right. exactly. Um, the numbers impact is inconsequ inconsequential. Only a minimal contribution to Microsoft's earnings expected. This combined with the fact the contract was awarded in a highly political charge environment makes the long-term impact of the award less than tangible. The key will be whether Microsoft receives any follow-on awards or traction at other agencies. Right, right. now they're going to be a big player. Um, so far, Amazon appears to have a substantial lead in public cloud adoption, but a trend towards more centralized procurement of cloud as well as hybrid purchasing puts Microsoft on an even better footing 
And at the same time, innovation in Amazon keeps those prioritized uh, innovation coming Amazon's way. Yeah. Yeah. And if we pull, uh, Microsoft doesn't break it out, but Amazon is growing this at AWS 40, at 45%. Let me see. Okay. 47% or something last time we pulled it up. Yeah. It might have changed since uh, 48.2. There you go. Not bad, man. Right. Can you pull up Microsoft and just yeah. see? I'm curious what they break down. Yeah, they, they, they may start breaking it down if they uh, start getting contracts like right. that, right? Yeah, so they don't oh, have it. Intelligent in there. Cloud. I wonder yeah, if that's it. I wonder, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot less if that's it. Yeah. And that could that could encompass a lot of things though, right? That might not be just exclusive to what they're talking about there. And if that is, if that is it though, <laughs> ten billion out of thirty nine billion is the big number for it one. It sure account. is, man. Yeah. It sure is. Yeah. So and what's going to happen? That's a yearly revenue, the $10 billion contract. How many years is that over, though, right? It's yeah. probably not for a year of work, as in $10 billion over X amount of years. But, like you said, now, you're, now you have a footing to go say to other people, hey, the government just put their faith in us. Why aren't you putting your faith in us? Exactly. So, inside the Dow Industrials, let's take a look. Well, first off, I don't believe the Dow's at a high. Yeah, it's not. No. Okay, yeah. So, getting close. We're, is that? I was going to say, maybe back it up. I don't yeah. know if that is the high. Yeah, I guess it is. Twenty-seven three ninety-eight. Okay. Okay. We'll be so, there by two o'clock. Yeah. So, inside the Dow, the move is out here today. Oh, Microsoft, of course. Um, and Apple. But look at that. Boeing. <laughs> Boeing is up there. So Boeing's putting thirty-four positive points. Goldman twenty-four. Microsoft twenty-two. Um, United Health uh, seventeen. Taken away from it. Um, Big Mac down uh, eighteen negative points. That's about it. That's about it. Can we get into McDonald's? What's what's going on with them? Yeah, you know, this is going to be interesting. The, you know, they they bought this company that. What's happening with Mickey is, D's, man? Is intelligent software. Yes. That, that they're going to be able to. <coughs> excuse me. Basically, speculate what you are actually going to order, which is a mind blower. Yeah. So I'd love to know. I, could, I guess I could see how you, you come up with. The oh, definitely. I, I I mean that's already happening. You pull up Amazon. Everybody doesn't get the same page at Amazon, right? right? They, right. Especially if you have an account there, let right. alone you're, it's just tracking your cookies on your browser. But they know yeah. what you've seen. They know where you've visited. They know the sites you've been at. Right. McDonald's going to do the same thing, man. I've talked to, I've uh, read things where they're going to know your license plate, all right? You're going to round the corner. Okay. They're going to know your license plate. They're going to know what you ordered the last oh time. God. The order screen's going to be tailored to you. I mean, it makes right. sense. It's, it's Jetsons. It's coming at us, man. It does. It makes sense. Yeah. And what's going on? Can I just see what, what, is there any hardcore news um, that's driving it? So, I mean, it's, yeah, we, we see that it's lost for a fifth day. That's a technical deal. So I guess. Like. I mean, it's just quite an extension of the losses coming from um, their earnings on yeah. that day. It just doesn't stop. I mean, you're down from 210 to 192. Um, yeah. And what does happen for these big trend followers, this is, we put this up there. They don't like it when it blows. I mean, that's it's below every the 50, the 100, and the 200. No matter what, man, you don't like when that is a trend from 220, and yeah. you're going all the way back to September 9th, September, October. You're almost two months of kind of lower lows, lower highs. And then Popeye is coming back with their chicken sandwich. And Are they going to have it available this time? Gonna, that was and, the big deal, check right? Check this out, folks. They're going to do it on a Sunday because that's when Chick-fil-A is closed. Okay. So the, the chicken battles are going to continue. I'm a big fan of chicken, man. So yeah, yeah. No, listen, man, there should be <laughs> more chicken options. A lot man. of people are because they sell a lot of chicken. Yeah, man. there's no doubt about that. Definitely. So small caps. Let's go to the small caps. The small caps topped out July of 2018, and you know, pretty amazing. You know, we're looking in, you know, at the aspect of all-time highs here and. You're still pretty far away from it. In I would small say caps. so, man. 173.39 in the IWM. Yeah, that's more than 10%, right? 10% yeah. right now from where we're trading at would bring this up to about 172. Yeah. So not even. You need a 10% pop in there. Let's bring the actual there. Russell up. I'll bring the actual indice up versus sure. the ETF. And I'm sure it's probably going to be pretty close, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. But remarkable 10%. That's nothing, uh, yeah. nothing to that. shake your head at, man. Now, it's remarkable that we're 10% off the highs. But man, oh man, what are we off the lows already? What is that number? 1266, we're more than 300 points. We're like 25% off the lows for the year and we're still 10% away. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648.
We have the Dow Industrials right now trading up uh, uh, 160. Now it's like up 72. S&P's up 19. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow 143, Nasdaq up 67, S&P's up 16 and a half. And J.P. Morgan, folks, and this is, you know, there's been stories like this for the last 20 years that the financials are going to end up moving out of Manhattan, and it hasn't happened, okay? Uh, but guess what? I think it's getting closer and closer. Uh, in, in this particular case, uh, the story is about... Uh, they are weighing, shifting thousands of jobs out of the New York area. Yeah, they are mall selling the Manhattan Tower, inherited from Bear Stearns, and it talks about a possible economic slowdown. So kind of getting ahead of things, right? Yeah. Trimming, trimming some of the costs ahead of that. Um, so their new Manhattan headquarters, meant to be an ode to both the company and the city, a monumental glass and steel tower. Nation's largest bank grew up here, but New York may be losing its luster. Despite more than, whoops, whoops, scroll up. Two centuries, pretty remarkable, of history in the city synonymous. J.P. Morgan is quietly shrinking its workforce there. The bank's been building up its presence in other locations and is now considering relocating several thousand New York-based employees out of the area to help rein in costs ahead of a possible economic downturn. Um, one yeah. option is to sell the investment banking headquarters at 383 Madison Ave, long the main hub for J.P. Morgan's bankers and traders. Execs are deciding what roles could be relocated. Go you ahead, get, where you? You get Plano, Texas, Columbus, Ohio, Wilmington, Delaware. And, yeah. you know, right in Tampa, where you live, 
Your city group has a big um, programming hub there. Okay. You know, so they started that a few years ago. So I mean, you JP's know. already made plans to move hundreds of New York-based credit risk jobs to Texas and to station some senior-level employees of the Consumer Bank there, according to people. And uh, they've also told some staff that New York region may no longer be a hub for compliance. Now, I wonder what they'll keep there. Yeah. But maybe compliance, they already figure out that doesn't have to be in the right. epicenter of New York, you know, right. the New York Stock Exchange. So we'll see. But it makes sense, man. Cost of living, cost of real estate, cost of everything, right? Totally. Taxes, watch out. Totally. Stay right there, folks. We got uh, Think and Swim coming up next. And we got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes. Dave, wait. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Well, go get him, folks.